we get started then? Sounds on, uh, like we have. <laughs> oh, have we started? Right. So, <laughs> <laughs> the Chimp Paradox by Dr. Uh, oh, mate, can we start again? <laughs> Who are you even talking to? It's just me. <laughs> uh, Professor Stephen Peters. <laughs> Not Dr. Robert Peters, like we said last week. Or something. I think you said Russell, mate. Did I say Russell? Oh, God. <laughs> anyway. Um, so... I remember you suggesting this book to me a year ago or so, and I went and bought it in a shop and didn't read it up until <laughs> recently. <laughs> Just had a whole heap of other books to go from. And then when you suggested to read it um, for this podcast, I uh, it was already on the bookshelf, which was great. So yeah. I was able to dive into it. I'll be interested to know how you came across the book and I guess what inspired you to want us to talk about it on this podcast. Yeah. Well, I'll do the second one first because it's in my head. I think it came off the back of Atomic Habits. Like that's when yeah. this book came back into my head because it's like that inner conflict of uh, I want to do this, but a part of me doesn't. Like that is just the chimp and the human and in, mm. in this book. And then yeah. habits themselves are all what uh, Steve Peters calls the computer, just like your historical database of um core beliefs and yeah good and bad habits that you've just got on autopilot um mm. and yeah i i found that really helpful in because i think i used to be a bit more like i should not do anything that's bad for me and like mm. if i have urges to they need to be stamped out <laughs> and like okay. that, that's not good and I think this this book was a bit like, okay, no, no, <laughs> your your urges are okay. They're a part of you. They're what we call your chimp. And um, you can't just like, it's they're way more powerful than your logical reasoning self that we'll call the human. And uh, you can't just never satisfy your chimp urges by sheer willpower for the rest of your life like you need <laughs> you need a way of managing them occasionally giving your chimp a banana and like that's what this book's about and um so yeah i i really found that it tied in nicely hand in hand with atomic habits which is why i brought mm. it up this time um i think it was my sister that first recommended it um i think uh, when her or her husband picked it up at an airport on the way on holiday and said they really liked it and thought I might be interested in it. Then, yeah, saw a copy in the office at work. A couple of colleagues also mentioned it. And I, I tend to, once I've been recommended something twice from two different directions, I, that tends to be my uh, go button to actually consume it. <laughs> yeah, that's, I think what I do is I like buy the book you've suggested and yeah. then wait to read it and that that can be any amount of time <laughs> immediately to i think up to 12 months so <laughs> mate i reckon um, i i reckon i recommended a uh, six pillars to you like years ago because <laughs> uh, I, I, I remember the listening to one chapter of the audio like 2012 that's like eight uh, yeah. years ago. <laughs> um interesting uh what, what you just mentioned around um how this book talks about you know our, our chimp urges and our natural um our natural drives and things like that i something that i was wanting to chat to you about was in, i couldn't get my head around how he explains how sometimes our chimp can be a good thing to listen to so sometimes it'll give us useful so we've got all these innate drives you know yeah. for um whether it's you know to be part of the troop or um you know, to get food or to be accepted, um, to be liked, um, sex drives, all that sort of thing. Yeah. And in the beginning, I guess I thought the way he was explaining it, that these were kind of, were only destructive. But right. I'm wondering at what points in time is it good to listen to those natural chimp urges and when are they a useful input into your decision making? Yeah. Well... The way I've understood it, you know your Maslow's hierarchy? Yeah. I feel like, and this is just my own thing, so like, you know, if it sounds like a load of rubbish, don't attribute it to the author. But like, <laughs> uh, you know, there's like the base ones at the foundation, like you need to be like, get some sleep, eat something, have some sex, find some shelter. 
and like if those things aren't really in place and you don't you don't sort of have a tribe or anything to eat you're not going to be like aspiring to your next violin lesson or anything like there's the needs you have at the top kind of will only come as a consequence once you've decently met the ones at the bottom and i sort of see the chimp um as being filled with the bottom needs Mm. and whereas our humans more the higher actualization needs the like the like living by values the um pursuing fulfillment that sort of thing purpose yeah yeah and um I think the chimp offers uh, strategies for meeting its needs in ways that can be very destructive to other needs. So, like, uh, it's got a need for food, so ju- and like pleasure. So, just like eat that cake <laughs> now. Yeah. And it's yeah. um, so I think the drives of the chimp aren't bad. I think. Mm. They're they're just it's just the organism we are. It's like saying you know a plant's need for water and sunlight is good or bad. It just is. It's just what we are, and that's okay. Um, mm. But I think some of it's like suggestions because it uses like emotional reasoning. Some of its suggestions to meet those needs um, can be of sacrifice, like our self respect, or they they can um, hurt other people, or you know, they, they can get us overweight and all, all sorts of other trouble. It doesn't really care about um, delaying gratification, anything like that. So it, the, I think the, it, the way I've understood it is that the needs themselves aren't bad, the urges aren't bad, but the like specific desires can be detrimental. The other ones, yeah. Does that Something make I sense had... to what you're kind of yeah. asking? Yeah, about? yeah. Yeah, I think because I, I think um, coming into this book, I guess I thought of those. Yeah, similar to what you were thinking that those natural urges were something that you need to kind of, you know, put to the side. Like they're getting in the way entirely. Yeah, yeah. Of, whereas actually, they can be. I suppose if they're nurtured or, um, I suppose you could say like molded, you, they can be used for your benefit, and they do serve a a purpose as well. Sometimes it's you know for protection. Like there is a if the um the chimp which is his word for pretty much like the amygdala right in the brain yeah well if, if, i think that's the, the whole yeah. the whole limbic system yeah. but yeah 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 um like if that's firing off a signal that's something worth listening to and something i hadn't thought about until i read this book was that so there, there's an input from the outside world yeah and then it will it will go to the the chimp first yeah yeah, yeah. so and at that point that's when the chimp will offer it to the human. So it's kind of in that order. So it's not like when something happens to you, you can automatically think about it with, you know, facts, truth, logic, reason. Yeah. But actually it's already gone to the emotional side of you and your, um, your, your chimp is looking for information for how to respond. Yeah. 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 So I, I guess, in seeing that it makes me realize that like whatever emotional reaction I have to a situation is okay. But beyond that, that's when my human um, comes in and can offer, you know, reason, logic, a plan, a different way, a choice to react differently, which I suppose I'm in saying that I feel like I must've thought about that before, but I never thought about it in this context of like, you know, chimp, human, yeah, I think like we can all relate to inner conflicts, can't we? Like, you know, you wake up in the morning and you just you just want to turn your alarm off, go back to sleep and just not go to work that day. Obviously, <laughs> like <laughs> you could do that, but like later down the line, that'll probably have some knock on consequences that will be even worse. So although, yeah, yeah. Y- your first response is your chimp being like, don't want to do this. Like your human mm. kind of steps in and is like, oh, you know, come on. <laughs> we kind of we kind of need to. Um, but then if you're, I if, think if your human's a bit like um, rude to the chimp or like, no, you are going to do this whether you like it or not kind of thing, then eventually the chim- chimp comes back to bite you. Hmm. He talks, um, 
he talks about there being a, a computer as well in the yeah. brain and that the computer is made up of inputs from the chimp and the human. So yeah. in my mind, these are kind of like the pre-programmed yeah. reactions you're going to have to a situation and way of responding. Yeah. So what I guess what he's saying is that if we, if we, we program our computer to have more human responses as opposed to um, more um, emotional reactive responses, which he would call as um, gremlins. Oh, right. In, yeah, yeah. In this, yeah, there's so many different <laughs> so, words. I, it, I, it got, gets a bit of, yeah. I really, I integrated chimp, human and computer, and I like that. But when he goes yeah. on about like moons and gremlins and goblins, it just all got a bit too much. <laughs> uh, there's something about asteroids in there, and I think I switched <laughs> off. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's like, like, you, you, you've got a nice, the way it was like, he had a really nice metaphor for something that's quite complicated, but that we can all relate to. And then he yeah. tried to fit so much more on top of it, where it just became this like uh, this universe, and but you're also in a troop, and there's a stone of life, and uh, yeah, yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> I went through. I, I I gotta say, I guess guess before we go on, like, I, yeah. when I first like that first couple chapters, I was yeah. feeling it. I was like, yeah, this is making sense. Yeah, albeit quite simplistic and yeah. borderline as if he was talking to like a child, but I felt like. I needed that, so that was good. Um, <laughs> but I got that, but then it kind of drifted off, and I found myself almost like not enjoying reading it. Like it got a bit to the point where it was a bit clunky, it was a bit oversimplified. And then obviously, all these little, I don't know, goblins, gremlins, asteroids, like it all just got a bit silly. But then towards the end of the book, the last yeah. couple of chapters, which um, I'm hoping to get onto a bit later, um, it really tied it together for me. And I, I felt like I kind of had a bit of a, a realization oh, about okay. a couple of things. So it, it came good in the end, yeah, but it's, yeah. um, it's interesting. It's interesting. You know, when there's a book and they're kind of, everything's being described as a metaphor, yeah. eventually it can get a bit tiresome. Cause I suppose also <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to challenge myself with books that I guess are a bit more, I don't know, go a little bit deeper or a little bit, I don't know, more scientific or something. I don't know what I'm trying to say, but like a bit more detail and specifics, yeah. you know, but then yeah. I guess halfway through it, I, I maybe got a bit tired of the kind of explanations. But anyway, yeah, really enjoyed the, the book. I, I yeah. had a similar um, relationship with it where it's like, on the one hand, like you say, it's almost written like a children's book. Like there are, there are nice cartoons of of chimps with bananas <laughs> and like <laughs> solar systems and it, so yeah it is and had like lots of it's in comic sans like it, <laughs> it's yeah. um it's it is very childlike but at the same time in those by having something so um simple it's like this is your inner conflict it's made up of two parts a human and your chimp and they're both like trying to dive in to program this computer so that next time yeah. a situation comes around, like their way wins. That I think that's quite helpful in the moment of a stressful situation when the blood mm. supply isn't going to your human. You need um, yeah. you need a simple like, okay, what do what? How do I want to be when I'm tired and I don't want to go to work? I've got a craving for another pizza hut or whatever it is. It's like yeah. those moments. A simple model is, I think most helpful for those like more like craving and stressful times mm. so that's where i've that's where i've gone between the simplicity and the helpfulness because mm. i always love hearing your explanations of things i i, would, I really want to hear what your view is on replacing gremlins with autopilots so okay. what he just yeah so i guess i'll give a bit of a description so what he's saying is old reactions to situations are made up of um often come from the computer where are gremlins which are old um destructive and unhelpful reactions that have been built up over time and what he suggests is that we should replace those with autopilots which are more helpful beliefs and helpful statements i suppose what i'm asking you is is it as simple as kind of just telling yourself to react differently and building that up over time or is it more complicated than that i i just saw these as habits so like yeah mm, you've got okay. you've got your human you've got your chimp and 
when we're born, they're, they're fresh like, uh, and that they've got this clean computer that hasn't got any data in it yet. But as we build experiences, the chimp and the human sort of are programming this computer of like, next time we see this pattern, run this program, like react this mm. way. Yeah. Um, so, you know, like in Atomic Habits, when he got you to like list all your habits and then mm. mark them as either good or bad, depending on your values. I guess I saw the autopilots as good habits and the gremlins or goblins <laughs> as as, <what> <laughs> bad, habits. as yeah. bad habits, and that um, the, in the same way we learn in Atomic Habits to like first raise awareness to your habits, um, to learn to like ride those cravings, to to choose how you would like to respond and like practice that. Um, I just saw it the same process of reprogramming new habits to replace old ones. I don't know if that's different mm. to how you read it. or Yeah, I, I, that's how I like to think about it. I, I yeah. prefer, I, I felt like his explanation I didn't quite, I didn't quite enjoy, but I prefer framing it more in the, the phrase of like, yeah, how do I want to react to a certain situation? Yeah. And that is something that you build up through experience, through doing over time. And yeah. something interesting to me was that, when you when an experience happens to you and you're choosing how to react it's really important to analyze that experience fully if, if you can because that's what is going to go into the computer right so if you um i'm just trying to think of an example one that's stronger so let's say like a breakup yeah. if you just didn't really think about the breakup or maybe your part to play in it or why it wasn't why this is bad for you or why this is upsetting you. If you don't go through that process of looking at it, um, I guess one logically, but also like allowing yourself to feel those emotions and go through the wave of, um, you know, kind of grief. Yeah. Um, the way it gets put into the computer isn't realistic. So I suppose that's where continual reflection on your reactions and on situations is really important in programming new reaction right. so you get you get a full understanding of the situation and why you reacted it reacted yeah. to it the way you did yeah because so far what i said was all about things that have already been programmed in and how to look at maybe yeah. when those happen how to change them but you're kind of saying well what about when new situations arise that are fresh patterns and like when that happens to you the way you respond is going to get programmed in and potentially rise again next time this similar pattern happens in the future so it's wise to listen to yourself when you have those like fresh potentially traumatic or at least uncomfortable experiences to know like what are the beliefs that are clocking through my head here what are the assumptions mm. i'm making about this yeah, maybe relationship because yeah. yeah. they're all going to get logged away and they're all going to come back next time um yeah so I, and th that really yeah not thinking about it just as like there's a natural output that's already programmed for you but you can yeah. reprogram your yeah, reactions yeah. to things and he says um and when i read this i thought this was so cheesy and i don't know but he said like in those moments you can say the word change so if you're coming up to a situation that's frustrating you yeah and you want to react differently like noticing and saying change so i i noticed this today so i went into town to go and grab a couple of things yeah. and i've got a thing that i'm trying to work on is that i get absolutely infuriated by slow walkers yeah. like it, it just does my it like really yeah. winds me up to a point where i'm like a bit embarrassed by it so i yeah. feel this kind of like get out the way where you why are you walking so slow have you got nowhere to be like what's yeah. it, it gets it gets ridiculous so because i'd like um i guess just finished off the last few chapters of this book this morning I, yeah <laughs> like this was fresh in my mind and yeah yeah this guy like kind of cut in front of me not on purpose it felt like it <laughs> um, <laughs> and he, he was like right there and i was going to kind of like try and overtake him or just kind of squeeze past him on the escalator and yeah. obviously with everything going on i was like okay I should, you know social distancing stuff but in that moment <laughs> i went i went change and i said it to myself and i was like right this person didn't know i was there they're not trying to slow down my day like, yeah why have i got this sense of entitlement that i need to get somewhere quicker than everybody else yeah yeah why like, is this the way I want to react in this situation? Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. Because of that, like, it happened again. 
inevitably because you're in like the city centre. Yeah. And I know it's like a really quick example. Like I learned really quickly, That's but awesome. I like the next time it happened, I was like, okay, remember that last time? It felt a bit better not to get annoyed at like someone who's like 30 years older than you just walking slowly and I don't know, <laughs> <laughs> like they had no idea. Like, they're not trying to piss you off. Like, yeah, no yeah, yeah. To, what's this sense of? Yes, I guess like I, I'm really. I guess from doing Atomic Habits and some of the other podcasts we've done, I'm really keen on these like choice points, like yeah. we base them every single day. And I'm, it's not as simple as like necessarily choosing a reaction. It is that, but it's also I'm trying to program a new response for the long yeah. term. It's not just in that moment. So recognizing that in that moment, I'm actually yeah casting a vote and building up a way of reacting. So hopefully maybe this time next year, I'm just, Free from being pissed off. By yeah, that's, that's an awesome yeah. example. <laughs> yeah. I, um, what? So when we've talked about <laughs> atomic habits, we're talking mainly about behaviour, and yeah. um, I don't think habits have to just be behaviour. I think they can be assumptions and beliefs as well, predictions yeah. that like cognitive processes. Mm. And um, yeah, you just described really nicely how yeah these goblins, gremlins, habits, autopilots, whatever they are, they're not. I mean, the output might be a behavior, but the, you know, in a kind of CBT way, which I'm guessing is where he got some of these ideas from, yeah. was yeah. like, well, well, we'll stop, pause, look at the assumptions I'm making. So like maybe mm-hmm. in this example, your, your frustration and anger was, you know, there was this unconscious assumption that this person had done it on purpose, which is your chimp, right? Whereas like your yeah. human obviously knows that <laughs> they didn't step yeah. in front of you to slow yeah. your day down and just like, pausing to like notice that response like check in with what your human thinks and like probably slow your nervous system down a bit sounds like it did you the world again mm. and i think it um it also made me aware of i guess what he describes as goblins yeah <laughs> which is like things are, are a little bit deeper like a bit more ingrained like there's some uh, deep okay. down assumption yeah so there's obviously like my gremlin, which is an unhelpful reaction to that situation. It's unhelpful to get pissed off every time yeah. someone walks in front of me. I'm walking through like the city centre of a like a five million person city. Like someone's gonna walk in front of me. Yeah. Ridiculous. This is gonna happen all the time. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Whereas like the the goblin, the deeper belief there is that like I suppose, yeah, I feel a bit I guess I'll just say it, like it's the assumption that I feel like no one should be in my way. What like my mm my trip that day was more important than anybody else's mm. and that I'm like anything that slows me down. So I guess it's like a deeper sense of like judging people who affect my yeah. well-being and presume they're done on purpose. So that's something that probably needs a bit more of a uh, sustained bit of unpacking. Yeah. And looking at, which, yeah. Which I is reckon... also good to know. Yeah. Especially no, for like those. Thought. Oh, sorry, just for like those assumptions and beliefs, not yeah. necessarily just like in the moment behavior reactions, but yeah. for like deeper seated, like, fuck, why am I so annoyed? Like, that's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And so there's like, there's what we might call bad habits or, and yeah, he was, I think he was saying there's kind of a spectrum, right? There's, there's ones that if you notice them, if you just raise a little bit of awareness, you could probably change fairly easily. And then it might get a bit harder the more deeply they're ingrained. But when they're down towards the bottom end of th- this has been hardwired long ago, then we can't really expect ourselves to quite easily change that. Yeah. And, and I yeah. think, um, you know, th- this probably correlates to things like core beliefs and CBT. But, and I think because he's writing a self-help book for anyone, he's sort of suggesting like, you know, those things are there. They'll probably always be there. <clears throat> we can learn to notice them and like, um, like almost accept and be aware that those like deeper beliefs we have are hardwired. Mm. Um, and in the book, he doesn't suggest ways to try and change them because I think he's just writing a, a self-help book for, for anyone. This, this mm. book isn't for like, you know, anyone who's really struggling really, is it? It's, it's just how to manage your yeah. mind just cause you're a human yeah. being. Um, so yeah, no, that was a really nice example of, of mm. like, <laughs> what he calls the goblins and the gremlins. I can't remember which way around they are, but one's like the hardwired beliefs, which Goblin. even if we notice them, um, they're going to be difficult to change. And one's the other ones that the sort of higher 
assumptions that are a bit looser that if we notice we could probably do something about quite easily yeah yeah that, that ties into something I, I didn't think there was a link between these two but i, I yeah. guess i'll try and draw it so he talks about um you know when you're setting goals for yourself you know yeah. short to term short-term tasks and things there's like your target goals that are things you can achieve but once you've achieved those goals they become maintenance goals mm, i found that's really helpful is, as well yeah yeah so i in regards to my example about slow walking this is something i thought about at least two years ago and i <laughs> right. vocalized it to friends being like yeah i really need to like work on my reactions to slow walkers <laughs> yeah or just yeah people in general being in my way so what's happened is like i actually achieved that like a couple of years ago i was like you know, just through various practices and probably just becoming a bit of a calmer, less judgmental person. Yeah. I was able to, I suppose, overcome that. But then I noticed today, it was it's weird today in particular, as the day we're doing this podcast, like it came back, that yeah. same old feeling. So what's happened is, is that I haven't maybe kept up enough awareness or like maintained that goal. I've, I've let it slide and it's yeah. these old behaviors. So I guess what's happened is that over time, I've gradually just not reacted in a positive, helpful way. Yeah. And the old reaction, like the moment there's not enough votes for the positive reaction, the negative reaction will just, the, the natural chimp will, yeah, yeah. will take over. It, it's too strong. It's too yeah. strong. Yeah. 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 So there's this anger just comes through and I'm just like, yeah. <laughs> I was doing so well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure it depends on the, uh, the day and how you're feeling and what you're up to as well. Right. I, I remember Jordan Peterson giving this example once of like, um, yeah, how your mindset is, is sort of goal driven. And, and when we're in that headspace of seeing things as goals, we just see everything around us as tools and obstacles, like in attainment yeah. of that goal. Mm. And he talked about someone, you know, if you're walking to um, a meeting and you're like half an hour early, if there's like, an old woman kind of walking in front of you, um, you might not even notice or give it a second <laughs> thought if you're just sort of strolling yeah. there knowing you've got plenty of time. Whereas if you're already yeah. five minutes late, suddenly this old woman's an obstacle to you and like the frustration <laughs> at her is like arisen. So yeah, your example really reminded me of that story. I was, um, something I wrote down in my notes is that I said I'm, a lot of my decisions around, you know, goals and things I pursue are quite, I said, quite chimp heavy. Like I, 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 <laughs> what I, do you I, mean by I that? so I, I pursue things that, um, I suppose feel, feel like exciting and good and get me like fired up, like yeah, emotionally, yeah. like I make quite emotionally charged decisions, but actually like what sees through my goals in the end is, is like the human and my, my logic and my planning and my execution and discipline for habits. So I guess I was just thinking I could be, I, I could do a lot of things on a whim based on my emotions. Like mainly, I don't know whether it's just because I find them daring or funny or just whatever, but then what is actually going to see through your goals is the, um, is the human, the one mm. who can like plan and be logic. And I'm wondering is that the point in which the chimp is helpful? Like the chimp can be used for motivation. Mm. You know, there are some chimp urges that can, could get you out of bed in the morning. I suppose if you like were hungry or something. Yeah. But, yeah. Um, well, it's yeah, like I'm wondering the, what, what you think yeah. of that. Yeah. Well, with the habit checker stuff, all those strategies around building habits were like things to feed your chimp, right? Like if you've, you know, if you're writing little X's on a chart each time you've done a habit, your chimp's not going to want to miss one of those X's anymore. And it, it likes yeah. getting the ticks in the boxes. Like if you've got a to-do list, so the, all those little strategies we do, we utilize the chimp to like, um, you know, to make us do that exercise routine. I, yeah. It sounds a bit backwards because you think, Oh, the chimp's the one that doesn't want to exercise. But, but once, if you design your habits strategically, you can like manipulate your chimp into like wanting to tick boxes off and like hit goals because it's a competitive yeah. like <laughs> thing yeah. that, that like enjoys that. So um, I'm not sure if that's what you mean, but no, no. It's, yeah. I, th I think that's a, it, it's an interesting thing to think about, isn't it? That like you could reverse engineer your, your inner chimp <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to yeah, like, yeah. pursue meaningful goals. Um, yeah. I mean, you said, you said you found a bit on um, target goals and maintenance goals interesting i just wanted to hear what you yeah like, so with why, the, why that was yeah when i read that it um 
reminded me of the morning routine I've got in place. Cause like for months yeah. having a morning routine was a, uh, I guess target goal of mine, like something I wasn't doing that like I had a, I was making a plan thought I was thinking about how I wanted to do it. And then I sort of designed it. I got it in place. I was like shuffling it around, you know, getting the things in the order I wanted it in, wanted them. Yeah. Um, making sure they fit all the um, criteria from Atomic Habits of being like short and easy and rewarding and that sort of thing. But I guess for about five, six weeks now, it's been a thing that I'm just doing and it's, it's, I'm just yeah. doing it. And I, there's not, I don't really desire to change it or mm. think about improving it. It's just, it's doing its job. I'm really pleased with it. And so now reading that it's become a maintenance goal and that's, yeah. um, it's not something I really thought about before because goals you think of as things to do, but then obviously yeah. those habits are things that you're already doing. You just want to keep up. And so I guess, yeah, firstly, it, it reminded me that that's a good thing to think about because I think those maintenance goals are things you can easily let slip and see as not, not as important as things you haven't achieved yet. Hmm. Um, so it's not like I particularly celebrate doing my morning routine now, even though a few months ago it was like this big burden in my mind. that was like this massive thing I wanted to achieve. And now I'm just doing it. I was like, well, that's Mm -hmm. taken as a given, but maybe, I don't know. I should be more like, uh, keep giving my chimp that, that reward of like, you're doing a really good job here. You know? (laughs) Yeah. I, I, I've thought about that. Um, in the context of there, there was a time a couple of years ago where I was just, I guess I just wasn't feeling like particularly good. I had like a few things going on. Life just felt like a, a little bit of a drag and I just wasn't like particularly happy for a bit of time. But I said to myself, because I'd established some goals, it's pretty similar to like your morning routine. I said to myself that like, no matter what, like at least I'm going to go for, like get nine hours sleep, eat properly, still go to the gym, yeah. still like do my journaling, still do my meditation. Like yeah. I wasn't doing anything miraculous or exciting with my life for that those three months but i knew yeah. that like for a bit of whether you call it self-preservation for a yeah. bit of um yeah simple maintenance just so things don't get worse just sticking with those goals and i think that's why maintenance is so important because yeah it, it could slide off then, then you're back to square one and you might yeah. be back with you know maybe feeling unhappy about maybe your body or you're not focusing as much at work or you haven't you're just not feeling as good physically like yeah. these sometimes maintenance goals are the basics and he talks about that um like around like recuperation like relaxing sleeping resting yeah making sure you've got time to do those things i to to carry this on i've similar to you i've i've trying to establish well you have established but i'm trying to cut down my phone use again so this was a habit this was a habit that i did a year ago i got my phone use down to one hour screen time a day yeah and that was going really well i was like Mm. really it's almost like in getting better and closer to the goal, it was really great to be like, oh, one day I'd have like one hour, 30 minutes. Yeah, and yeah. that was my goal. That was my goal for the week. I'm like, oh, sweet. Like seven days in a row, I've got one hour, 30. It's and that's like, your chimp, st- right? That's your chimp yeah. just getting excited about like ticking yeah. another thing off a list. Yeah. Yeah. And then it got to like one hour, 15, seven days a week. I'm like, fuck, I've got this. This is so yeah, good. Yeah. Like I'm noticing all the benefits. Then I got down to one hour. Yeah. And I was like, great, I'm here. Yeah. And then it's like two, two weeks go by with one hour of phone <laughs> use. Yeah. And I'm like, What's the, I don't know. I, it's really got What's me the thinking payoff? about it. Yeah. What's the payoff? Like, I don't get the same satisfaction from one hour a day because maybe they're, the reason I did it is because the benefits are actually a lot more subtle than I realized. Mm. You know, like when things around like sleep and exercise and diet, the, the benefits of it, or just at least doing some of it, aren't actually as obvious as you think they are. Yeah. Sometimes they're a lot more subtle. It's the fact like, oh, I wasn't falling asleep at work at two o'clock in the afternoon or, oh, I didn't get like really stressy and react badly in that situation at work. Yeah, kind of, yeah. You don't notice the things that aren't happening because of it, but you notice yeah. it when you're not doing them. So, yeah, hidden costs or hidden benefits. Yeah. yeah. No, I hadn't, I hadn't expected that we would speak about maintenance goals as much as we have. It's, um, it's it hard really to, interesting to me, yeah. I, I can't remember, maybe, I don't know if you can. So I remember thinking like oh, this is something worth considering because i know that it's 
it's easier to strive for target goals than keep up maintenance goals in a way because like like you said about the phone you don't get that same payoff of like improvement mm. Did, do you remember if he talked about like suggestions for maintenance goals or not but, yeah so what what i've done here is um well what, what i wrote is saying like c- celebrate like what you said like oh, celebrate okay. the yeah. maintenance goals um and also what are here he says like doing a regular audit on how you're doing so like whether that's like, like a, a review um, yeah like a month a monthly reflection yeah I, I i tend to do that weekly i've always wondered whether i do that too often um and also he says like auditing whether the chimp is getting in the way of those maintenance goals yeah like, that's what you need to look at is like is is your old reactions and old ways of doing things preventing you from maintaining this because there's yeah. a real like anyone can go to the gym like five days a week for two weeks, but it, yeah, you know, so it's a real person who can like they go, I go to the gym five days a week and I've been doing that for the last six years. Like, yeah, <laughs> well, in, at- in Atomic Habits, you yeah. call that when that enters your identity, right? It just becomes who you are, and that that's he when says those... that in this book too. Yeah. Oh, does he? Yeah. He said, yeah, he mentions that. Yeah, he says like making it part of your identity, which I loved because I was like <laughs> picking good books that match together. Cool, <laughs> Must yeah. be true then. <laughs> um, Must be true. Two books have said it. So. <laughs> yeah, it's a good point, isn't it? That once once something becomes a part of your identity, you're just much more likely to unconsciously keep it up. Yeah. I want to... Um, um, go on. I'll go. Yeah, I, I was going to... I saw a nice little segue. Have you seen a segue? I've not seen You've a segue. Segway. I was going to shift awkwardly into something else. Oh, no, I saw a nice segue. So what, what <laughs> takes over? <laughs> <laughs> segue, okay. So we're, we're talking about like identity and, yeah. um, you know, like build, like your, your reactions and your habits and your goals contribute to that. And something I've made a bit of a note of here is he talks about personality. Yeah. And how I, I read here. So it says like personality is like the ingrained behaviors and responses that are predictable. And these are like yeah. repeated habits and how they are demonstrated. And yeah. I guess recently I've been, I did some supervision with a, um, you know, a colleague and a friend at work. And I, I asked them a bit about, you know, how do I, I suppose, like, how do I come across? How does yeah. my work and me as a person look to you? Because I'm trying, you know, to be a, um, you know, like a calm, thoughtful, present, um, energetic person. And I suppose my habits are the reason that my habits are for the point of being like that. Like all the things I do, you know, with like trying to sleep well, eat well, exercise, meditate are all for the purpose that like when I'm in the real world interacting with other people, that I am switched on, I'm listening better, I'm not tired, I have energy to share with people, my mind's working as well as it is. Mm. And I suppose that I was just thinking how that tied into that around all of this, like how you react to certain situations and the habits you build are actually seen by other people. Yeah. And, you know, that it obviously it can sound a little bit obvious, but basically that the chimp can get in the way of you being the person that you want to be. Like yeah. if you're reacting you know, from that emotional drive every time, you're not responding in a way that's, you know, meaningful to the human. Yeah. And, you know, I thought a lot about how, you know, when he talks about autopilots, which are more, you know, helpful ways of speaking or more helpful inputs into that computer, that yeah. made me think a lot about mindset as well. How oh, yeah. Your, yeah, your mindset affects the presentation of your personality to other people. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So you're talking about how these habits have you come across to others? Yeah, and that, that this... That's what it is. And it links a bit to um, you know, what we spoke about in confidence last week. Like it, it's all about how you present yourself in the world. Like the purpose of all of this is so that you can share you with with the world, right? And also obviously be um comfortable with your own decisions and your own choice in life. But like a big part of it is to be able to yeah. interact with well, other yeah. people. I, I just yeah. got to fill in that second bit. But yeah, it's it's both, isn't it? It's meeting your own needs and your own contentment and um, having your own sense of self-respect and personal integrity for you and for your own sake. Hmm. But yeah. Also to then 
help others do the same thing to help meet their needs to help be a person in the world that you want to be for other people so i guess as you were talking i was getting a bit uh I was like, wh- where do you come into this? Like, it's all very well having a presentation so that yeah. you feel that other people see you in a particular way. But yeah, you want to make sure that just as important is that it, you're not uh, you're not just coming across in a way that you want other people to see you as, but that you're also mm. acting in a way that's true of your own integrity and that builds your own self-esteem, right? Mm. And it, it makes me think a lot about I know, you know, when people talk about mindset, you know, a lot about like positive thinking and the words you tell yourself is the way, yeah, you know, can manifest itself in the way you act around other people. I guess I always thought of that as being quite, um, I don't know, overly positive. I I just didn't like that as an, as an idea, you know, positive self-talk. Yeah. Whereas I I think I've actually realized the, like a real importance to that because I, I've noticed in my life that, there's quite a lot of like negative self-talk and self-judgment and things like that that yeah. affects the, that affects the, I suppose, my ability to, you know, make, make good choices, but also, you know, affect the way I present myself to other people as well. Yeah. 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 I definitely changing or, or raising awareness to like inner self chimp chat that isn't uh, mm. serving or helpful and then looking to uh, look into your human to and, and maybe something else, a more compassionate part of you that can provide a, an inner chat that's more helpful. Sounds like um, mm. a great idea. But yeah, I, I share your sentiment of that. There's too much of a simplicity and just think positively and talk positively to, you, to yourself because that that can be, you, you know, you can do that from a place of complete avoidance of how you're feeling. You can like say mantras or incantations that just completely mm. don't resonate with your core beliefs which take more work and so i think there are issues of it to be sure but yeah I, I get the sentiment of changing that inner chat there's um there's a chapter in the book um about like being who you are oh, and yeah. that's all related to um self-image self-worth self-esteem self-confidence right. yeah and something that really stood out for me that i wanted to um get onto is how the chimp and the human perceive me as a person like day to day. Right. It's made me really think about the way the metrics by which I measure myself and how do I view myself as a person in my day to day interactions. So what I've got here is that like the chimp is, you know, going to be a lot more self-critical, a lot more um, judgmental of itself, less tolerant of mistakes, Mm. wants to be popular, afraid of failure. Whereas the human is more understanding, more realistic, mm. more um, you know, values based, and wanting to live by those. Yeah, yeah. I th- I think this was like towards the end of the book, and it yeah. really stood out to me. This oh, yeah. bit. Like, okay, so when I'm when I'm maybe not like feeling good about myself, or I'm reacting to a situation not the way I want to. Yeah, yeah. Or I'm judging myself for how I'm behaving. Like, is that just coming from like you know the chimp, or is or yeah. could I be more helpful and view myself a bit more compassionately and fairly from the human perspective? I don't yeah. know if that's something you, you've thought about. Y- yeah. It, I mean, it comes really hand in hand with compassion focused therapy, but yeah, recognizing that those self judgments are almost always pretty irrational, right? We, we're like holding ourselves to like, completely different standards than we were to others like there's no way we'd speak to a friend the same way we do to ourselves. like no yeah uh, and i think it is helpful i mean that's what cbt is well cognitive therapy is all about really trying to notice those emotionally driven judgments and assumptions that just don't hold up to logic and reason at all um Mm. yeah i mean you asked me if I thought about it. I guess I think about that all the time. <laughs> I've done for years. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I think I'm getting better. <laughs> yeah. Something's working. Yeah. I but guess. no, I, I definitely hold myself to like, my, well, yeah, my chimp, emotionally driven chimp holds myself to like standards that I just wouldn't hold other people to. I, I treat myself hard, you know, without without pausing reflection and sort of conscious effort of building that internal 
habit i would naturally just treat myself harsher than i would other people so yeah completely understand what you're saying and it's not even necessarily about it's a part maybe i don't fully agree with in the book you know with like the human side you know using logic reasoning that's the thing i think sometimes that's not always helpful because you can give logic and reasoning but still feel like like i remember you saying i think in the last podcast like you still don't feel good you've still got that emotional judgment of yourself so yeah and something i think you talked about in the happiness trap is not necessarily about whether something's true or not whether it's real whether it's imagined it's like is it is it helpful this feeling or unhelpful i think that's more what i'm trying to respond to here so when i'm being if i'm being a bit um you know judgmental myself or critical this this isn't helpful to me like it could be true that you know i have made a I don't know, said the wrong thing to the wrong person. I made a bit of a dick of myself in front of someone else. Yeah, like, yeah. Whether that's true or not necessarily isn't important. It's like, is it helpful to berate myself for making a mistake or saying the wrong thing? Yeah, yeah. The answer is no. So a more helpful way of thinking about it is, you know, yeah, I guess be, be more realistic. Like, okay, I'm not going to say the right thing every time. I'm not going to never make a mistake. I'm, you know... Yeah, I mean, it's uh, the yeah, the perspective I always enjoy is how would you speak to someone you really cared about, a close friend, a you know, a partner, a child who was saying this stuff? Like, you wouldn't just hit them with facts and reason. You'd give them a cuddle, like you'd yeah, smile, yeah. like you'd turn on your social engagement system. You'd you'd embody a sense that I fully accept you, not not mm. just in the words, like well, it's fine that you made a dick of yourself, or whatever, but that. You, you'd give it a complete embodied attitude towards that person. And um, that's what's missing from cognitive therapy. And um, I think that's kind of getting, you're, yeah, you're sort of getting close to yeah. saying that's what you mean. Like the, it's not just about logic and reason, but having an attitude towards yourself of acceptance, which goes back to one of the six pillars, right? Yeah. Did you, um, did I, you like the, oh, go, go, yeah. No, can I shoehorn yeah. one in? Cause, uh, the shoe on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's not a segue. It's definitely a shoehorn. Um, <sighs> fe- feeding the chimp with banana. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, there, there's this idea. I want to know what you think of this because it goes against our kind of more militant willpower. Just don't do anything bad idea. But right, I, one, one, yeah. one I found really helpful is this idea of feeding the chimp a banana, which is like... Um, so... I uh, have often for long like times had like really strong pizza cravings. <laughs> like sometimes back at uni, I would like wake up at 3 a.m. and just get one and I just couldn't sleep. So I just order a Domino's and eat it in the middle of the night. <laughs> and I'm like, this is an issue. And the, the way I tried to solve it was, yeah, cold turkey. Like that, that, that's just not, we just don't do that anymore. And I, I know that it comes, it, it's not about the food or the pizza. It comes from a deeper unfulfilled need, which when that's not being met, like my chimp uh, feeds it with other nourishment. And mm. um, the strategy I've taken more recently is rather than um, tell myself I'm not going to eat this stuff ever, which has been my strategy in the past and has worked for stretches of time um maybe you know sometimes either a year a year a year or more but eventually something will happen a breakup whatever and it'll come back in and um what i've done more recently is said okay well for one evening a week i'm gonna like prepare to have that meal that my chimp craves Mm. and um schedule it in (laughs) and have it in a more organized way because because if i let give into my so what will usually happen i'll get some sort of craving in the late afternoon uh, and i'll be able to override it so that's that's fine it's a little craving i'll i'm gonna make my healthy dinner have that the craving will build I'll, i'll have it in the later in the night and you know maybe i'll power through it go back to sleep and that's fine how more never affects me in the morning for some reason it's always in the evening and then, so maybe the next day I do that again, I power through, I ride it out, but probably by the third or fourth day, like <laughs> I'll, it's like, it'll still be there. I'll, I'll, and what will happen is I'll have like, I'll still have my three normal meals because I'll be like, no, I'm not having it for dinner. That's, that's not what we do. 
and and then it will get quite late and then when i finally cave i would have already had three meals that day and i'd be buying it at like 11 or midnight or something and then eating a massive like heavy calorie filled dinner mm-hmm. like right before i'm trying to go to sleep yeah right yeah, yeah. So like but by scheduling it in advance and having it to look forward to I will I will probably like skip lunch just cuz cuz I like the feeling of really enjoying it and then mm. have it a lot earlier like you know 5 6 p.m. Yeah. and giving myself a lot of digestion time before bed so like by g- what he calls you know feeding your chimp a banana like just giving it a bit of what it wants I'm yeah. sort of like yeah. keeping a steady lid on it and and um, mm. that's really I think that that idea probably sat with me for quite a while from the first time I read this book and uh, it's not in my, I don't want to say not in my nature, but it's not in my default setting to plan things that are a bit bad for me. So it's yeah. sort of a new experiment. And I wonder, yeah, what, what do you think of that? Yeah, idea? well, I, I guess something that, there's two things that makes me think of. One of them is that the bit he talks about, like indecision is draining. So it sounds like those three days you've had yeah. leading up to ordering this pizza, it's pretty draining going like, oh, should I have it? Shouldn't I have it? Oh, should yeah, I yeah. give it to this craving? Should I get it? Like, that's not a way to like live your life, just kind of fighting urges and giving into urges. Yeah, yeah. You could you can take a bit more uh, of an active role in it and <laughs> yeah. choose to feed your chin. What also he says though, and I'm interested, I guess I'm kind of answering a question with a question, is that he, he talks in the book, sometimes if you just say to your chin, like, yeah, sure, go on, have it then. Like, you can almost, like, trick it and go, like, is yeah. this actually what the chimp wants or not? So I, I'm wondering whether in scheduling it in, sometimes you just get, or maybe one day you will, get to that point where, like, that scheduled Friday night pizza, eventually you're just at the point where, like, actually, I don't really want this. I don't need to schedule, it, schedule this in anymore. Yeah, yeah, I wonder maybe. whether that's the, I wonder whether that, that's the end point. So I, I've had that before. I've been like, right, Friday night I'm getting takeaway, but then – because I've exercised every day that week, I've yeah. eaten really well. But to that point, I'm like, actually, no, I don't. Act, I don't really want that. So yeah. I suppose the chimp can show itself at different points during the week. Yeah, and I suppose that's probably where you need to watch it because I guess you never know when it could it could hit. Like you but, might but, really, yeah. but since then, since I've been doing this, when it has hit. I've been able to soothe it with it's okay. Like we're going to do this on Saturday and it, it, it's just enough for it to be yeah. like, all right. And then, uh, then I'm not having that inner turmoil. Cause w- when I've said to myself in the past, like, you know, I'm never eating, I don't know, whatever I'm never eating wheat or refined sugar or whatever ever again <laughs> in my really life. Again, yeah. Yeah. And so when the craving comes, the, the chimp knows that, right? So it's, it, <laughs> it keeps banging on the door. Whereas when the cravings like, I want this now, it's like, okay, we're, we're going to have it on Saturday. It's like, uh, all right. <laughs> and and I don't have that tussle as much. For me, I found that it's enough. Because I first started it out with like um, a monthly, I gave myself like a monthly mm-hmm. cheat meal. Pizza. Yeah. And, um, and I found that if I did get a craving the first week, it wasn't enough for my chimp to be like, it's okay, we're, we're going to have one in three and a half weeks. <laughs> so well, uh, this, is what, this is what he describes as boxing the chimp, right? Like you're telling the chimp, so in the managing the chimp section, yeah, there's three yeah. parts to it. So there's exercising the chimp, which is basically just like Ranting. venting or yeah. dreaming about this pizza that I know you've described before. And then the second one um, is boxing the chimp. The third one is giving it a banana. So the boxing the chimp one is like telling the chimp truths that it will accept yeah. and that is meaningful to the chimp. So yeah. by the sounds of it, it sounds like you telling your chimp, like, it's okay, you'll get your pizza, but yeah. on Saturday. Yeah. And like, that's meaningful to the chimp. It's like, oh, okay, sweet. Like, I will get the pizza. I will get my <laughs> needs met. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose there's always the balance, like, your human is strong enough to know that, like, okay, it can, it can wait till Saturday. But, yeah, um, yeah. And, yeah, that, that's something I... That you've, you've given like a perfect example. I was wondering like, how do you box the chimp? And that's just like, that's yeah. Exactly how you do it. yeah. So, well, take it a bit more. That's control. quite, yeah. yeah, that's quite a, an, a, a, it's an example that doesn't involve anyone else. It's just an example with me. I think with mm-hmm. the boxing, the chimp examples he talked about, it was more about first venting, right? Like let's yeah. say, I don't know, you, you know, 
you were so pissed off <laughs> at someone for like walking slowly in front of you, uh, you that you just needed to call me <laughs> and they'd be like i like just get it out like what a dick this person yeah. was for like cutting across you and you know yeah. it's completely irrational and it's your chimp or whatever but it's just fine to find a safe space uh like, like a compound like you would let your chimp run around in the zoo but not mm. like in the local supermarket i think he uses the example of yeah so, like yeah. you find a zoo for it to run around in which <clears> might be a good friend that you know knows your chimp and knows you don't really mean it but you just need to like vent and get it off your chest yeah. and then once you've got to that point then you can like feed the chimp those messages of like you, you know that they uh they didn't really mean to cut across you or we can yeah. have pizza on yeah. saturday or wh- whatever the rational human is which the chimp will accept and that, I, I think, think i saw that's boxing the chimp then the chimp will get back in, it, back in its box <laughs> yeah 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 i think um the bit he taught he does bring up like bringing in humor and laughter a lot into it i feel like for me in talking to you yeah when i'm exercising the chimp it's normally pretty funny yeah 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 <laughs> like, i remember just like that that seems to kind of get it off my chest, but also get a bit of perspective on it, lighten yeah. it a little bit. Like if I'm having a full rager about a slow walker, like I know it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it helps to know that someone else thinks it's ridiculous, and we can just laugh about. Yeah, it. Like, and like because I I know you, I know like <laughs> I know you, you don't like that, and I know that's not your higher value, right? I know it's your chimp, so it's it's like by laughing yeah. about it, we're also accepting this part of you. That's it's fine that you feel that way. It's yeah, yeah. I found that. Um, I know we we had a phone call a few weeks ago in which I was feeling quite, um, I guess, feeling like quite upset and angry about a situation, and I felt like that was really good to get that off my chest. I don't think that's something I would usually allow myself to do. Yeah, just to like get off all my like whether it's irrational or not just get it all off your chest i know yeah. some some cultures are a lot better at doing that than maybe the the one i grew up in um, yeah but yeah, yeah i think that's an interesting interesting thing like some some people are just like they vent really quickly and then it's kind of dealt with whereas for me i, I think i have to go through every process yeah. of it like, to get to feel a bit better yeah yeah no, I think it is healthy. I think the danger can be when you don't, I guess, you know, if you've not read this book or not thought about these things, when you don't know it's your chimp. So you're venting about, but you come out of it still feeling like that. Yeah, that person was an absolute dick for cutting me off. <laughs> and like, that's the way you <laughs> yeah. conclude that situation. Like it's, it's a, it's a step in the process, right? It's not just to um, mm. validate all these irrational beliefs. Yeah. And also the effect that has on other people as well. You know, like if you're venting in an office about your boss and all your other right. colleagues are there, like that's un, like yeah, technically it is like exercising the chimp, but it's not a, a good it's, place to do. It's it. exercising the chimp in the supermarket, is what he says. Yeah, yeah. there's too many, there's too many people. Right? <laughs> it's, like the it's not appropriate. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you, yeah he yeah. talks about finding a safe compound, so it might be a, a phone call with a close friend. It could be screaming into a pillow, but it, it's not. Mm. Yeah, it's not screaming about your boss in the office. <laughs> Something I was um interested just to chat about was a section on relationships oh yeah and, yeah um yeah there, I, i'm interested in the bit on the troop it, is that in that section yeah the troop mm. like finding Talk your troop that. well it, i i thought it might be what you're referring to but um nope <laughs> 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 carry on <laughs> okay <laughs> um he talked about how because the chimp is like ego driven and that we yes. grew up, we grew up in a troop or a tribe, like you know, not in our childhoods, but in our evolution, in our nature. Um, that we're we're almost our chimp is programmed to take in everyone else's opinion about us. Mm, yeah, and in the, in your yeah. troop, it's like saying like it's not healthy. Because he didn't talk about this, but particularly nowadays with like social media and stuff, where you're not just getting the views of a few hundred people you get in the views potentially of thousands of people um he was like it's better for your chimp to specifically choose the people in your life that, that your human has selected as those yeah. that you will listen to about yourself so yeah. like you said a moment ago you um you know at work you purposely solicited a particular person's feedback on how you were coming across right that yeah. would be you choosing a person to be in your troop for that aspect of life. Rather yeah, they're just, like a really valued, yeah. Yeah, yeah rather like than being... Valued a, colleagues. Yeah. yeah, then if you like 
I heard some hearsay that someone at a party you met said they didn't like you to someone else or something like that. That's yeah. like that in this book, he's saying like, no, if they're not in your troop, just don't, <laughs> don't bother listening, but like solicit feedback from people that your human has selected as honorable and trustworthy and or, an authority in this particular area. I just found that really helpful. Yeah, yeah I, I, I had thought about this. So d- yeah. yeah, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> there was like, for me, this brought up the bit around um, like an, an old chimp value of mine that I, I yeah. feel like I'm, I'm past is, um, well, was that, that need to kind of, for everybody to like, to like you. So yeah. like that, that, that's a chimp drive. Like that there's a belief to be safe is to be liked. Yeah. And that everyone's opinion matters. Whereas what he's saying is like, pick the people that matter in your life and yeah. their opinions most important and not yeah. worry so much about people who are outside of that. But I guess that that made me think a bit about what sort of people we're attracted to, I guess, in friendships. And this could go for relationships as well, but more in like friendship circles. Like what yeah. kind of people are you attracted to? Are you attracted to people who kind of um, stroke your chimp? Or, um, <laughs> you know, I don't know, stroke your ego, like make you feel good, make yeah, you feel yeah. safe, make you feel wanted? Or do you go for people who kind of challenge your um, your values or help you be a better person by, you know, being a bit more constructive and not kind of yeah. um, so praiseworthy of you. That that really stood out for me around, you know, because the, the chimp's got drives of, you know, wanting to feel secure, have territory, you know, feel yeah. powerful and feel wanted. So it could naturally get drawn to those sorts of people, whereas yeah. that might not be the most helpful troop to be around. Yeah, yeah, if you just seek out people that sort of, as you say, stroke or validate your ego and like anyone that challenges you on anything you just cut out. It reminds me of the section on love on the uh, road less traveled where you talked about yeah. love. Love was um, like when you're acting in aid of someone else's growth and someone else's like spiritual growth might be, um, you know, you might help someone's spiritual growth by challenging on something difficult where their chimp might mm. feel a bit upset by it. But you, you have this understanding that ultimately they're, they're human. <laughs> you know, you're in their troop. Your human might listen to that feedback, take it on board, and integrate it. And they might ultimately thank you for challenging you on something difficult. Whereas if and you're the, yeah. purely listening to your chimp, you, you might just dismiss them and be like, well, they're not my friend because they want me to quit smoking. <laughs> or, <laughs> yeah, well, I guess like the human would be based on like a more realistic belief that like in order to be, um, to improve myself and to grow, I need to listen to the opinions of other people. Yeah. Not yeah, just yeah. people who are going to kind of, um, you know, back me. No, yeah. I don't say back me no matter what, but we'll just kind of say what I need to hear. Yeah, um, yeah. The bit on relationships I was interested in, it, it brings me back to what we spoke about in um, Poddy number one on Attached. Um, yeah. Was, um, he, he talks about when you're, I suppose, deciding to be with someone yeah. in a relationship, looking at, like, drawing up three columns, right? Yeah. And one of them is, like, the good things about them. Yeah. The other one is, like, the not-so-good things, but I can live with. Yeah. And he makes an emphasis to say, like, those things in that second column are things you're going to try and change. They're things yeah. like you can live with and obviously you can express your feelings about them, but don't expect them to change. But then there's like this third column is like things that I do not like or do not accept. Yeah. And he basically says like, if there's one thing in that column, you should probably end it because yeah. like research, research shows that relationships with one of those things don't last and don't go on very well. Well, yeah, I mean, it, it's a, yeah. it's just logical, isn't it? If you don't accept something, but you're also accepting it simultaneously, that's just a, it's an incongruence. I, I, yeah, I remember listening to this section as well, and yeah, I, 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 so I did think, yeah, I did laugh a little at it and thought that we might talk about it. <laughs> bit, but and I guess um, what this makes me think of is when thinking about, uh, I guess, relationships or whether like an avoidant attachment style yeah. or a. Um, insecure one like how useful is you know gut instinct and feelings and emotions when it comes right. to making a decision about a about a relationship because sometimes there, there must be some truth to it if people just go you know something just didn't feel right is that something doesn't feel right about the thing you weren't you didn't accept yeah or is it something something <laughs> didn't feel right about them as 
as a person. I yeah. suppose I'm just wondering what your thoughts are on that because that's the bit where I almost like don't want to ignore the chimps. No. Um, you know, kind of emotional drives and attachment, no. especially when it comes around, you know, attraction as well. Yeah. Well, I don't think we should yeah. ever ignore the chimps. No. Like, so for even, you know, my pizza cravings, there is an, unf- I believe there's an unfulfilled need there when I get those cravings. I don't think those, that need specifically for a Domino's, but <laughs> the, yeah. it, the chimp has found a method that in the short term works for it and it keeps yeah. going for it. So when a relationship doesn't feel right and we get uncomfortable feelings, there is an unmet need there, full stop. Mm-hmm. whether it's because that person's not the right person is a whole other question, right? We might have unmet, unmet needs because of the way we are in relationships and we might be that way with whoever we're with, in which case, yeah. if just breaking up with everyone we meet is uh, not going to work itself out in the long run, right? But um, yeah, so I, I don't think the... I don't find the... Um, I found it funny, but I don't find his suggestion of if there's one thing that's unacceptable to you then you shouldn't be with that person. I don't find that shocking. I just think that what criteria are we going to base that one thing on? Is it like, well, you know, she's a brunette, so she'll never do. That's unacceptable to me. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's probably your, like a bit of your chimp talking and you might need to reevaluate why that thing is unacceptable. Well, that's what I mean. That's my, right. that's my point. That's yeah, like, what, yeah. what is it? That one thing that we find isn't quite working or we're not cool with or whatever yeah. it is. Like, is that like how much, yeah. How much, how valid is the chimps, you know, input into that? Yeah. It's, well, I guess it's, it's, yeah, it's hard, isn't it? Something you don't accept might just be because it like, it hurts well, you. Too okay. Much here's, here's one. Yeah. Here's one. Let's think of yeah. some that we would accept and then go to the more challenging ones. Let's say someone is like, okay, I'm looking for a partner because uh, I want to have children someday. And they go on a date with someone and the person they go on the date with says, I never want children in my life. That's a pretty, like if the person, the first person knows they do want children and this person is saying, I never want them. Then that is, I think a pretty valid one of those columns of, well, here's yeah. one thing that we just don't match on. So this isn't yeah. that. So I'm not going to pursue this relationship. That uh, yeah. I think you'd agree that that would be one that sort of yeah. makes yeah. sense. Right. Um, have you got any that are more like uh, more difficult to know if they're chimp or human? <laughs> mm, um, I guess something that would some maybe to do with someone's like work schedule or something like that. Like they say, I, I'm committed to my okay. to my work or something. Maybe, maybe that person had been cheated on in the past from an ex-partner who goes on work trips um, mm-hmm. all the time. I'm thinking like the reason behind why they don't find this person going on work trips mm-hmm. um, three three times a month acceptable. Yeah. The reason it's not acceptable is because there's like an emotional reaction that like yeah. they're scared that they're going to get cheated on again. Yeah, like so if they like, could have that guarantee of trust that it wouldn't happen it's not the work trip right it's the trust and the distance yeah yeah i mean in my opinion in my opinion i would want (laughs) if that person was my friend i would want them to evaluate their trust issues and this how trustworthy this partner was rather than write them off because they uh Mm. worked a lot if they were like it depends i think it's it depends if this um category is if the human agrees with it as well, or if it's kind of purely chimp driven, I guess. Well, I think what, what would be a, I'm, I'm thinking this as I'm, yeah. I'm talking about what a useful thing to do is, is to kind of, so that there's something in this column that you don't like, or you don't accept. Yeah. Yeah. Just allow yourself to feel exactly why that is like, why does this bother me? Yeah. Has this happened to me before? Yeah. Why don't I want this in a partner? It could be as simple as like, well, I really want kids. So I'm really emotionally mm. attached to, wanting children this person doesn't want children yeah but then with human logic as well you could i guess you you could add to that by adding the logic like well it makes absolutely no sense to be with someone who doesn't want kids Mm. when i really want kids so i suppose the conclusion i'm drawing is that yeah both the chimp and the human 
input is really important, particularly in relationships, because you're you're talking about your like emotional reaction, your emotional bonding. It could be you know yeah. things around attachment or um, even you know love languages or styles of being with someone. Like there are yeah. going to be certain things in your life that contribute to you wanting to be with a certain person and yeah. not wanting yeah. to be with other people. So acknowledging that's really helpful yeah. and then bringing the human perspective in it going like, okay, is this unreasonable of me to want these things yeah. from a partner yeah. or is this, is it totally okay to have like, well, obviously it is, but like are my wants, needs um, and preferences valid in this situation or are they being totally overridden by my chimps? Yeah. Yeah. Of it's difficult. Being cheated on again or, um, not wanting to be with someone who doesn't want kids. Yeah. Um, yeah. Do you get, do you get what I'm saying? I, I suppose I'm just thinking like taking both into account, but having yeah. a healthy balance of the two, it well, just the, feels like chips the way I would more important in relationships. Yeah. But I agree, but it, it goes back to kind of that. Well, in the way I see it, it goes back to what I said about the hierarchy thing of needs where in the example you gave the chimps, um, the fuel that's making it so emotional about these work trips is the um, insecurity and lack of trust, right? Mm. And it's the chimp is seeing stopping them going on work trips as a resolution to meeting that need. And I, I doubt yeah. that's the case. Um, it might soothe it in, in, in any given moment. But, um, or, you know, I guess it depends, doesn't it? If, if you, the way you said it, I don't know. Was it the goblin was the more ingrained one? Yeah. Um, maybe this person's like, I'm, I just accept I have trust issues and always will. And I just want someone that's going to be a house husband. And that's the way it's going to be. Like I won't yeah. accept anyone else. And there's nothing, um, I, there's nothing wrong with that morally. I just, I would prefer that person if, especially if they were someone I loved, I would prefer them to want them to grow and to resolve their trust issues rather than, placate them if that makes sense yeah that probably go more in the second column like where it's not so good and but then there's the point it's like not so good but i can live with it whereas what you're talking about is crossing i was going i prefer someone not to go on work trips but i can't live with that you're making like a conscious yeah. choice going like yeah, actually yeah. i'm i'm not going to be you know people are like on their third marriage or something and like that may have happened to them before and they're like look i'm not getting married a th- like a third time to someone who goes on work trips it's right. just not yeah but then if well that's there might be a strategies that. around it might there there might be like well as so long as i get like uh these phone calls and y- you know what's your history on work trips <laughs> have you slept with a lot of people on work trips in the past like are there people going on this work trip that you've like that you find attractive yeah. like it, it yeah i think it is tricky um mm. to yeah, I don't think we're going to resolve it in this call, but the finding what's, okay. what falls into that category of like, this is unacceptable to me because I'm trying to think of more personal ones, but like, I guess like, let's say with me trying to um, improve my diet, if I met someone who kind of lived on fast food, automatically I'm thinking, well, that's going in the one where I'll just kind of, <laughs> I won't bother. <laughs> that, that's too much effort, like to try and yeah. build a lifestyle around someone who... Um, where we have such different eating habits, um, you know, eating something you do probably three times a day for the rest of your life. Like if I'm going to be with someone for the rest of my life, that they, that kind of needs to be, we need to find compromise in how we're going to do that together. And if, if mm. they're just, if they just want to eat like that, it's, it's not going to work logistically. And it, it might say something about the way they've thought about, you know, self-respecting their body, they might be eating for yeah. other reasons. So, yeah, that that's one. Oh, the same as smoking, wouldn't it? Something yeah, like yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So that's one that comes to mind. Where you might argue, as someone could easily argue that, ah, oh, you're not going to be with her because she likes takeaways. That's that's a bit much, Luke. Um, but, yeah. Um, obviously, but then it's, if on it's, it's on a scale. Yeah. Yeah, but then I guess like if it brought up, it brings up a strong emotional reaction for you let's say and then you um like you apply logic to that as well going like actually no i don't want to be i want to be with someone who like mm. like eats healthy or isn't yeah like looks that. after themselves I suppose like, you kind of stand to change yeah. then i suppose that's where you're taking in both inputs really like yeah yeah aren't you you're going like okay this 
like I don't want to keep having a strong emotional reaction to this. Yeah. And even when I apply logic, I can't think about this differently. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I think that's a whole thing. I don't think we're going to get to the bottom of that, but um, really interesting. Yeah, think about mm. that as well. Yeah, how we are? Uh, how are we doing? Um, uh, I think um, I'm covered. Uh, I've I've loved it. I've, t- I've loved what we talk about. Is there anything else you've got there that you want to make sure we get on? Yeah, just one final thing, probably worth touching on. This is this is it from me. But yeah. um, the bit on confidence. Okay. Um, because I know I know we did um on confidence last week and yeah. I get the, the, the main gist of what he's saying is that like the chimp um, believes that like confidence is something like, or well, when they do things, they, they have to achieve it and they can't deal with failure and they can't deal with the consequences when things yeah. don't go well. Whereas uh, he says basically like, if you believe like what I'm about to say, like yeah. you'll have confidence in a hundred percent of situations and basically confidence from the human side is just, confidence that i will do my best in this given situation and like i'd like to achieve things and i can deal with failure but i like my confidence comes from the fact that i'm just going to give it a red hot go Mm -hmm. rather than confidence that i will succeed and i suppose part of that is like accepting that like you'll make mistakes um and that like you are human and you're not perfect and that's where he says confidence comes from and that yeah. makes me think a bit about the uh the bit of non-confidence where it's like accepting the inner idiot yeah and um, yeah. yeah and it got me thinking about you know times when i don't feel confident is when i'm i'm really attached to the um i guess the success of a yeah the outcome and, yeah and what, what when, i could tend to do is like when when i haven't got the outcome I, it's almost like I can, I can abandon myself. It's like confidence is just gone. Like yeah, it's yeah. out the window rather than like, actually I gave that interview like a really good go and I didn't get the job and that's yeah. fine. Okay. So that, that's the gist of what I got from it. I just thought it was worth bringing in considering we spoke about confidence. Yeah. Well. And it's so, um, on the one hand, it sounds so simple. Like if you believe this, you'll be confident. And yeah. <laughs> it, I think that is true depending on what you mean by belief. Like if it's an embedded core belief, I guess the yeah. opposite of a goblin, he didn't, he didn't have an opposite for the positive, did he? He just had autopilots, but there will be an opposite hopefully where it's like, this is a, a positive belief that's so embedded that it'd be a real struggle to, you know, someone who's like got such a sense of integrity and security that even a breakup and a job loss would not knock that out of them. So like you, you could imagine yeah. the opposite of a goblin, right? I think I've got that yeah. right around. Yeah. No, sorry, um, yeah. <laughs> um, what was I saying? Yeah. So that belief on like, I'm only going to take confidence in things I know are fully in my control. If there's an element of it that's out of my control, I'm not going to f- use the outcome at all to judge yeah. myself on. I'm only going to judge my input, the, like the effort I've put in, the the learning I've put in. I'm going to accept my human fallibility. It's like, yeah, if you did believe all that, like wholeheartedly, then then you would have confidence. It's it's the uh, the challenge, I guess, is like the six pillars of constantly doing yeah. those things so you get that positive belief that's ingrained in you. Yeah, yeah it definitely ties into like self-responsibility. Like I... Yeah. You know, I take full responsibility for preparing myself for that interview, for making sure I'm dressed appropriately, yeah. for making sure that I've, um, you know, had enough sleep the night before. Like, there's a lot of steps that can like lead up to giving your best. And I guess it's yeah. around, you know, I, mean, I think that's what you know. Time back to what I was saying earlier. Like, a lot of the habits I do, and a lot of the things I do to you know, make myself feel awake energized switched on calm present you know is for the purpose of giving my best when when i need to it's kind of like that's the preparation yeah. before yeah, yeah for example yeah. like before going to work like the reason i sleep try and get a good sleep and exercise before work is so when i get to work i yeah i'm my best and i can have confidence that i'm like in the best headspace and best i'm best prepared to do the job I need to do it like, yeah. before I go on, yeah. before I go on a night out. Like I'm, I don't know, like all the preparation you do before a night out. It's like, so I'm, I'm the best version of myself when I get there. So I have confidence in the fact that I'm like 
putting my best, the best version of myself out there. And I and think I feel I'm, comfortable with myself. Yeah. yeah, I think that's a good point on responsibility. And I think it's also worth pointing out that the way we respond to ourselves when things don't go well either, because w- mm. someone who has maybe a lot of what ifs might, um, might take this idea of control and be like, okay, well, this didn't go well, but I actually could have done this and I could have done this and I could have done this. And what if I'd have done this? Therefore I didn't, um, do everything in my control. Mm. Therefore I'm a weak and pathetic human. Like uh, you could, you could still only consider things in your control and beat yourself up a lot and have poor confidence about it. Right. Um, if, if you're con- like, if you're holding yourself to such a high standard, so I think as, as yeah. well as not taking on um, beliefs that outcomes that aren't in your control ha- reflect on you, even if you could put that to one side, it's also about taking an attitude of like, how, how would I respond to a friend, a loved one, a child who, is, mm. who had this same reaction to this situation? Maybe it's okay that, you know... Um, I want to reflect on the fact that say I um, stayed up later than I should have the night before an interview. I recognized that probably wasn't the best choice I made. I I've learned from it. I'm not going to do it again, but I'm not going to like call myself a worthless. So, and so because yeah, of it. Yeah. <laughs> and also like Rich, Rich, like the point he says in the book around this, he gives that example. Like people go like, Oh, but I could have done better. I could have yeah. like done a different strategy. It's like, well, no, like you had confidence at the time that you did the best you could at that moment. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, people like you make decisions that are best for you at that point in time, you yeah. do things. So th- that's what he's talking about really is that like, you can only do your best in that moment. Like looking back at it isn't helpful because yeah. you didn't know that at the time. Like if you'd known that at the time you would have done yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. So, oh, wow. I, um, yeah, I'm, I'm surprised how, uh, energized that book has made me feel considering, um, <laughs> considering the, you didn't like it <laughs> <laughs> C- considering the uh the slump the slump i felt in the middle of right the ages, like, nah, it's, it, it brought up a lot of things and um ties really nicely into i think six pillars yeah ties into habits i think we touched on some things that were in attached as well around yeah. relationships and um yeah it's uh it's i'm, I'm surprised <laughs> how much i enjoyed talking about it but i really did and i i mean that so um yeah me yeah. too love doing this with you mate yeah yeah it was good stuff me too i'm really enjoying it and yeah equally i i get so much from knowing i'm going to talk about it with you and talking about you talking about it with you from the book than i would have done if we didn't have this chat so i really appreciate that as well yeah absolutely straight uh fully agree with you there yeah oh good, good times stuff. all right mate yeah, I'll, um, we'll uh, we'll chat soon. Yeah, we'll we'll do another one next time. Can't remember what, but <laughs> yeah, we'll, uh, we'll we'll put that up on the screen so people know what we're doing. Going on. We're doing this one next time. <laughs> <laughs> See you, mate. See ya.